Good morning. If you come here often or are visiting with us today, we would like to welcome you. Please remember to sign and pass along the friendship pad, which is found at the end of your pew near the center aisle. If you are visiting, please include your address if you wish to receive information about our church and its activities. Our announcements today include one from the uh, group going on the adult mission trip. Over the years, the adult mission trip participants have appreciated and relied on your donations of snacks and baked goods. They have been significant financial and physical contributions. However, due to this year's complicated and restrictive travel arrangements, we will not be able to transport those items. If you would still like to help this hungry, hardworking group out this year, <laughs> emphasis on the hungry, please consider making a financial donation instead. Checks, cash, and online donations should be labeled adult mission trip. And that was hungry, hardworking people, thank you. Please join us after worship in the community room for coffee hour hosted today by the admin committee. Next Sunday, Reverend Pam McShane will be preaching. Reverend McShane's bio will be posted in this week's newsletter. And now let us quiet our hearts and minds as we pray the prayer of preparation found in your bulletin. Living God, fill our hearts by your Holy Spirit so we may proclaim the good news of eternal, abundant life in Jesus Christ.
Welcome to all who are able to gather here physically in this space and to those who are joining us online. I invite you to stand in body or in spirit as you are able. Life has been revealed to us in Christ's Easter resurrection. We gather once more to testify to life. We declare to each other in community what we have experienced. In community, we are here to testify to God's grace. Let us join in singing our opening hymn number 240, Alleluia, Alleluia, Give Thanks. As we gather together in worship, we come both to be praised, to give praise to God, and we come to be shaped in Christ's image. And so as we gather, we take time to confess our need for God's hand upon us, for the shaping and changing of our lives. We join first together in our prayer of confession, and then we offer our own prayers in silence. Let us pray together. Living, risen Lord, it is not easy to live into the reality of Easter. You show us life in the face of death. You want us to seek life, yet we struggle to seek your presence in our lives. We forget to open ourselves to what you want for us. We fail to live as your resurrection people. Help us to see the signs of your presence and to witness with joy to you, our Savior. Amen. Friends, hear the good news. In Jesus, we are forgiven. God is our strength 
and our song and has become our salvation. We shall live seeing, showing, and telling the love of God. Rise up as people of faith, prepared to see what God gives us, so all people may know Jesus. I'd like to invite the children to come forward and join me on the steps. Awesome. Can you guys get up just a little bit higher? Perfect. Perfect. Anybody else coming? All right. Gotcha. My brother had a boxer named Jack. And Jack, when he needed to go outside to do his business, would go and stand at the door. But if you were in another room, you didn't know that Jack was standing at the door. And one day, we were putting up wallpaper in the bathroom, and Jack, we were all the way upstairs, and Jack was at the door, and Jack made a mess. He went to the bathroom inside the house, on the floor. And Jack, Jack was a very sensitive dog. And when we came downstairs, he was so embarrassed and ashamed by what he did that he went over and he stuck his head up under the lampshade so we couldn't see him. Well. That's when we do, when, when we do something that embarrasses us. Well, we hide, our, we, we put our eyes down. We don't, we don't want anybody to look us in the eye. That's what Jack was doing. And that's the kind of thing we do. Well, Jesus' disciples, that's sort of what they did when they went and hid in an upper room. What kinds of things do you think they might have been embarrassed about? Well, they were, they were embarrassed because they told Jesus that they would always stay with him no matter what happened to him, and they didn't. They all ran away and hid. And they were embarrassed, and they were afraid that the soldiers who took Jesus away were going to come for them, and they were afraid that maybe the religious leaders were going to come for them. They had a lot of things they were afraid of, and most of all, they were afraid because some women had told them that they have seen Jesus, that he is not dead anymore. He's, he's alive again. God's made him alive again. And they thought, oh, now Jesus is going to come for us. And Jesus is going to be mad at us because we didn't do what we said we would do. And so they're hiding. They're hiding in this room because they really don't want anybody to see their face. They don't want anybody to look them in the eye. They especially don't want Jesus to look them in the eye. And they thought Jesus was going to say, what kind of friends are you? Hmm. Really? You couldn't do this? What happened? Are you scaredy cats? But that is not what happened. That's not what happened. When Jesus came into that room, 
Instead, he said, peace be with you. Instead, he said, you are forgiven. I still love you, even though you've really messed up. And that is the really good news of Easter, is that God keeps on loving us, and Jesus keeps on showing us that love. So the next time you do something, and you don't really want somebody to look you in the eye, you you sort of want to hide your face, sort of like Jack did, just remember that Jesus will forgive us. Everybody sit up, please. All right. Let's put our hands together. Okay. Say after me, dear God, thank you for the big love of Jesus that you keep forgiving us and you showing us, you keep showing us the right way, the way of love. Amen. Thanks, you guys. Off you go.
Good morning. Today's gospel reading is from the book of John, chapter 20, which can be found on pages 100 and 101 in the New Testament portion of your Pew Bible. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb and we do not know where they have laid him. Continuing with verse 11. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she said this, she turned round and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? For whom are you looking? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. This is the word of the Lord. Continuing with the Gospel of John in chapter 20, we continue at verse 19. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, He breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Now Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told them, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless... I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, my Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, 
and that through believing you may have life in his name. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God for these gospel accounts of the resurrection of Jesus, for they repeatedly, in each of the gospels, are showing us that it's not easy to get our heads wrapped around resurrection. It's not easy to live into the reality of Easter. The resurrection reality of Easter was completely unanticipated. Yes, they had heard Jesus' words, but we've heard many words of descriptions, but we don't know until we're actually there what it's like. And so the reaction in each of the Gospels, the first reaction, is fear. The disciples needed time to process. They needed time to process what was occurring. And as we have seen is the pattern in the Gospel of John, every encounter that Jesus has with someone starts out with a question or an assumption and understanding, and Jesus keeps teasing it out into a different level of meaning. And so we should not be surprised to see Jesus doing the exact same thing here at the time of the resurrection, at the time of the empty tomb. Mary and Thomas are able to put into words their confusion and their needs. Mary and Thomas both have questions And because they are willing to ask them, they each end up having a personal interaction with Jesus, now risen from the dead. We need to see this pattern, this picture of how things unfold. We need to see how the grace of God keeps working in Jesus' encounters with people, and never more so than here. Let us stop calling Thomas the doubter. We don't call Peter the failure. If we're going to call Thomas anything, let us call him the persister, the one who seeks which is what we see again over and over in the Gospel of John, people yearning for an encounter with Jesus. Thomas does not deserve a label that dismisses who he is, for the reality is that we are all in a process of coming to understand the resurrection. Nowhere in these resurrection appearances do we see Jesus act with impatience or disgust or rejection, nor do we see Jesus refuse to provide people what it is that they need. Mary Magdalene saw the empty tomb, but she did not believe the risen Christ until he appeared and spoke her name. Not until she hears Jesus, the good shepherd, calling her name, does she recognize his voice and to see him before her. She runs again to tell the disciples of her encounter. She has first gone and gotten Peter and the beloved disciple, and then she comes back, they leave. She runs again to say, I have seen the Lord. Uh, And they dismiss her words because they have not seen for themselves. And so instead they have locked themselves in a room to hide. On Easter night, when Jesus appeared in that place where ten disciples were hiding... Jesus showed them his hands and his side. And only then did the disciples rejoice. 
Now, we know that Thomas was not there hiding with them. In other places where we encounter Thomas in the Gospel of John, he's actually got a fair amount of bravado and courage. He's sort of the Peter in the Gospel of John. We don't hear a word out of Peter in the Gospel of John until next, until the end of the book. And so I imagine that Peter was out in the world paying attention to what was being said on the streets. That he was out attending and not hiding. And so upon his return, he only asks that he can have the encounter that the other disciples had with Jesus in his risen form. And so it is that eight days later, Jesus comes and he invites Peter to see and touch. He invites Thomas. But Thomas, we are never told that he does actually touch. All he needs is to have that personal encounter with Jesus. And he makes the holiest of statements, my Lord and my God, that we encounter about who Jesus is in the Gospel of John. Go back and reread the ending of Matthew, of Luke, and of John. And you will see that Jesus provides what is needed. He provides what Mary needed, which was to hear her name. And he provides what Thomas needs, which is this encounter that involves seeing but probably more experiencing Christ right before him. And so it is that Jesus also will find us. Jesus will seek us. Our asking, our seeking, our probing is all part of faith. Wisdom comes out of trying to get our heads and our hearts wrapped around certain experiences, trying to put them together in accord with what it is that we may not yet have experienced of Christ, but what we have been told, what we know from other people. And so doubt often turns into faith. Our asking opens doors in our hearts and in our minds. Our asking bears fruit as we discover how it is that Jesus comes to each of us in a unique and personal invitation so that we might indeed see Jesus present among us. Thomas reveals to us the importance of asking. Through Thomas, Jesus shows how he will meet us where we are. Jesus shows us that God keeps coming, pursuing us. And so here in the Gospel of John, those who meet Jesus are given several gifts. First is the gift of being called by name. I see you. I know your name. Second is the gift of revelation. Both Mary and Thomas are greatly reassured in the midst of their uncertainty and their doubt because Jesus reveals himself. He helps us he helps them to see him. Third, Jesus offers peace. 
the peace he promised that would come after he was raised from the dead and ascended into heaven. Fourth, Jesus, just as God did at the beginning of creation, breathes into the disciples the Holy Spirit. And fifth, now renewed in the Holy Spirit, Jesus commissions the disciples, sending them into the world just as God sent him. Five gifts that Jesus gives. Not a word of judgment, not a word of condemnation, but the gifts to be people who trust in him, who see him. Today, we commissioned 23 people who are going to Fort Myers, Florida. We are commissioning them to walk with people, to work with people, to stand with people, to support people, people who are weary, weary from the loss of their homes, their places of business, the loss of their schools, people who are weary for the delays until things can move forward, weary from what it means to live in temporary shelter and to constantly have a sense that things are shifting and moving, and weary of hurricane warnings and their aftermath. We will commission them today in the name of Jesus, knowing that Jesus will make himself known, knowing that Jesus will provide moments of peace, knowing that the Holy Spirit is in the midst of whatever it is that is going to unfold. We commission them to go, just as we go about work and ministry in our own communities to ask good questions, to listen well to the questions and doubts and fears that are being expressed, to accept that doubt is often part of the process of discovery of faith, and to trust that Jesus Christ is present. I send you, Jesus says, as the Father sent me. Amen. Let us sing hymn number 510, We Gather Here in Jesus' Name.
With joy, let us bring our gifts to the Lord. Gracious God, accept these gifts and with them our lives to be used in your service. Give us eyes to see you and others through you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today in our prayers for the congregation and for our ministries, we are praying for Mim Dorenzo, for Donna and Dave Force, for Joanne Bianchini, and for Paul Leppard, who will have a procedure this coming Friday. Friends, we gather at this table as guests of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is not a Presbyterian table. This is a table that is open to all who trust in him and who wish to know him and call him Lord and Savior. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. You are holy, O God of majesty, and blessed is Jesus Christ our Lord. With you in love and compassion for all, Jesus healed and taught, challenged and comforted, welcomed, and saved. Jesus formed a community promising to be with his disciples wherever two or three were gathered and sending them on his mission of hope and healing to love and serve in the world.
O God, we rejoice in the light of the empty tomb. The stone has been rolled away from both the mouth of the tomb and from the depths of our hearts. We continue learning to live in the power of the risen Christ. We look for encounters with the risen Christ, gathered before you with people of every nation, tribe, and language, with the whole church on heaven and in earth. We joyfully give you thanks. Remembering all your mighty and merciful acts, we take this bread and this wine from the gifts you have given us and celebrate with joy the redemption won for us in Jesus Christ. Help us to make a living and holy offering of ourselves so our lives proclaim the one risen from the dead. Take this bread and forget those who are hungry. We cannot take this cup and forget those who are thirsty. We cannot hear your words of peace and forget the world of violence. We cannot celebrate the feast of your family and forget our divisions. Strengthen us to be your work, to be your body in the world. Unite us in Christ and give us peace. We come, O oh God, praying and lifting up before you as well the change of heart that we seek, but we also dedicate to you and ask that you bless the ministry of one great hour of sharing, the ministry of disaster assistance. We pray for Mim, for Dave, Donna, Joanne, Paul, and all those we know in need of your healing hand, your grace, the blessing of your presence in their lives. And so as we eat this bread and drink this wine through the power of your Holy Spirit, feed us with your heavenly food. Renew us in your service. Unite us in Christ. For with thanksgiving and hope, we join our voices. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Your death we see. Your resurrection we proclaim. Your coming we await. Come, Lord Jesus, come. The risen Christ is in our midst, and so with him we pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it was in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord took bread, and when he had given God thanks and praise, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. In the same way, when the meal had ended, he took the cup, and again he gave you thanks and praise. He said, this is the cup of the new covenant, sealed in the shedding of my blood, poured out for the forgiveness of sin. All of you drink of it. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Let us keep the feast. <laughs>
Let us join together in our prayer of thanksgiving. Most holy and welcoming God, we give you thanks that by your word and the sharing of this meal, you open our eyes and our hearts to the presence of Christ among us. Send us out by the power of your spirit to live this good news in the world. The Lord has risen indeed. Let us stand and offer to one another the peace of Christ, and as those who are being commissioned would make their way forward, that would be helpful. It's a bummer, I know, I know. Whew, what a task. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I know you'll do so much better once you get there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We are called by God to be the church of Jesus Christ, to be a sign in the world of what God intends for all humankind. And so Dave and Sandy, Joe, Ida, Scott, John, Laura, Gary, Sandy, John, Rick, Sue, Ken, Patty, Graham, Jane, Sally, Sharon, Missy, Marcia, Megan, Tom, and Ty, by the grace bestowed upon you in baptism, it is sufficient for your calling because it is God's grace and so by God's grace we are saved and enabled to grow indeed in the faith and to commit our lives in ways that serve Christ God has called you to a particular service to show your purpose by answering these questions who is your Lord and Savior? Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. Will you be Christ's faithful disciple, obeying his word and showing his love? I will with God's help. Do you welcome the responsibility of this service because you are determined to follow the Lord Jesus, to love neighbors, and to work for the reconciling of the word? world? I do. Will you serve the people? with energy, intelligence, imagination, and love, relying on God's mercy and rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. I will with God's help. All right. And do you, the members of First Presbyterian Church, confirm the call of God to these people to provide care and support to people in Fort Myers and Port Charlotte following Hurricane Charlie and Ian? providing Presbyterian disaster assistance in partnership with the Florida Conference of the Methodist United Church in service of Jesus Christ. If so, please say, we do. We do. Will you support and encourage them in this ministry? If yes, please say, we will. we will. And as you leave worship today, there are bracelets that you might pray for each of these people as they are 
uh, in service. I invite you now to join me in the prayer that is printed in the bulletin because one of the things that we know is that the church gathers for worship and by the Holy Spirit, the church is then scattered out into the world to serve. And so we pray together. Almighty God, in Jesus Christ, you called disciples and by the Holy Spirit made them one church to serve you. Let your spirit rule your church so that we... Jesus Christ, who having gone before us, is coming to meet us in the promise of your kingdom. Amen. Friends, we're going to sing our closing hymn, I'm Going to Live so God can use me. Hymn number 700. that no matter where you go, God has a purpose in your being there. And that you are never alone, and by the power of Jesus, he has something that he wants to do in and through you. And through the gift and the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, you have a word, a touch, and affirmation and an inclusion of grace and mercy and wholeness and forgiveness to offer. And so we go as a blessed people that we might be a blessing. Go and serve the Lord. Amen. Amen.